Hello there friends, today we have an unboxing and these plants that we're unboxing today have come all the way from Canada. Now if you're an ignorant American like me, you might think that Canada is a dark and cold place most of the year, which is not true. I'm well aware, but uh, you might imagine that the plant selection from Canada might be subpar, but I'm gonna prove you guys wrong today with one of my favorite places to receive plants from online, which is Plant Haven Toronto. As their name suggests, they are located in Toronto, Canada, and as this video suggests, as me being in the United States, they ship not only to Canada, but also to the United States. I've done a couple unboxings with Plant Haven Toronto in the past, and some of my favorite plants have come from them, which I'm very excited to see which new favorite plant I have hiding in here because this is a blind unboxing. I have no idea what kind of plants or how many, for that matter, plants I'm going to be unboxing today. But from the looks of this box and the feel of it, I think we have a pretty decent unboxing going on today. I guess one important shopkeeping note just to make is that if you are going to order these, plants from Plant Haven Toronto and you are located in the United States, they only ship to the United States every two weeks versus if you are located in Canada, they would be shipping weekly. So just one thing to keep in mind there. They do all the United States shipping from Buffalo, New York, and they take care of all that phytosanitary certification. So you do not need to worry about that. And if you like what you see today and you wanna go ahead and make a purchase from Plant Haven Toronto, make sure that you use code NICK2024 to go ahead and save 15% off your next purchase. So it looks like inside this box, we have some sort of heat protectant or temperature protectant here, I think. Oh yes, we got this little sheet of mylar or whatever it is, I don't really know, with this heat pack, which is still quite warm, I might add. So if it's still pretty cold in your area, worry not. Peel back this paper and see what we have hiding in here. <laughs> Looks like we have a decent amount of plants to go ahead and unbox today. Let's count these. It looks like we have nine plants to unbox today, so a really decent unboxing. A mega unboxing, if I might say so myself. The one slight differences I'm seeing from our last Plant Haven Toronto unboxings is that they now include little tags that have their logo on it, so after you unwrap the plant, you can just go ahead and put the tag in there and you don't need to keep track of whatever you got, which honestly probably isn't an issue for you guys. If you are purchasing the plants, you know exactly what you're getting but sometimes I do these unboxings and then I throw out the paper and I'm like, I don't remember what that plant was. Fortunately, I have the footage to go back and figure it out, but now we have the tags. So while we're holding this one, let's just go ahead and open it up. So they use the packing paper, which is the typical method that you're going to see when you're purchasing plants online, which is my favorite method of packaging plants. It's just the most foolproof in my opinion. And on the inside of the packing paper, they keep their plants wrapped up with fluff, which is perfect for those plants that can be a little bit more fragile, like Hoyas, which they have a whole lot of Hoyas available, a hell of a lot of Hoyas available on Plant Haven Toronto. So if you are a big Hoya fan, I would highly recommend checking out their Hoya selection, which this is adorable. What is this one called? This is Hoya Lucantha. I love the name. It sounds like a dainty woman's name. And this is sort of like a dainty feminine looking Hoya. So honestly, the name fits her like a glove, like Cinderella slipper. My initial thoughts looking at this Hoya, first of all, it's beautiful, but it's giving me a combination vibe of Hoya Bella in the way that it's kind of carrying itself, as well as Hoya Polynura in the way that the leaves kind of, kind of like shiny but dull, but also have this kind of like veination to them. This this is a really cute little plant. It looks very, very thin. These leaves are like completely see-through, especially because I have the light lighting up here right now. So maybe that's kind of throwing it out of proportion, but it does look like because of how thin this Hoya is, something that maybe I would want to grow in like my greenhouse cabinets or inside a glass cloche to get started, just to make sure that this plant is receiving the correct amount of humidity that it needs, or that it's not going to be shocked from my environment, which is probably a lot different from the perfect environment that they were growing these at their little operation that they have at Plant Haven Toronto. Oh, but before I get too ahead of myself, they have a little bit of paper towel that was dampened to be in contact with the moss or the soil or whatever you're growing substrates going to be for your plants that you're purchasing, not only to keep that soil or moss in place, but to help keep it moist on its journey. Let's pick our next one. Okay, we have another Hoya here. Who would have known? James and Autumn, the owners of Plant Haven Toronto, know that I love Hoyas, so I'm sure that there's going to be quite a few Hoyas, more than just these two in this box today. So again, we got a fluff. Oh wow, this is a very interesting looking Hoya. <laughs> 
Oh, wow, I have never heard of this one before. This is some really interesting foliage on there. Do you see how long and skinny these are? The leaves on this are giving me like the same vibe as like a super long retusa without the retuse ends or like the butt chin like ends. But it also kind of gives me the same vibe as Chaperdii. So just like I was saying, the first one was kind of giving me vibes of Hoya Bella meets Holy, uh, Holy Hoya Polynura. Hard to say. This one's giving me vibes of Hoya Retusa meets Hoya Shaperdii. So two decently common Hoyas, same with the other one, that are put together to make some new plant, which they're not hybrids, by the way. I should be very clear about that. These are species, so I'm assuming that these are not hybrids, as one would assume when they're species. Come on, Nicholas, you know this. When people say that all Hoyas look the same, I'm already proving you wrong right here with these two. I didn't say the name of this one yet. This is a Hoya Insularis. Should be remembering to say the name right when I pull them out, but. <laughs> wow, I love these two Hoyas already. They could have just sent me these two plants and I would have been like A plus, but we got seven more to open. So let's not dilly dally. Are all of these little ones Hoyas? Most of them are Hoyas, but we have a couple of Aroids as well to unbox. So let me open up one of those Aroids while we're at it. This one right here, is I will say right off the bat, a, a philodendron that was really popular a couple years ago. This is one of those philodendrons that used to be like hundreds of dollars and it's not as expensive as it was before. And from what I've seen, I've never grown one in my home myself, but from what I've seen in person, they are some really beautiful plants. They have a really, an attribute that I'm a really big fan of. Let's put it that way. So if you've been watching me for a while, there's something about this plant that I'm obsessed with. Which is saying a lot because I'm kind of, I will admit, I'm gonna break the fourth wall and say, I don't really love philodendrons anymore. Like I'm kind of, love the way they look, by the way. I don't love the way they behave. They, some of them, some of them, hopefully not this one, have been mild like pest magnets in my home where I have like thrips problems with them and I can just like never figure it out. Some of them I'm starting to figure out, like my philodendron triportidum, for example, has been like a amazing philodendron for me to grow in my home. So I'm not writing off philodendrons entirely. I'm just not really seeking out philodendrons at this time. But this one I have seen on my recent plant excursions and I've been like, I I'd consider it. So I'm actually really happy that I don't even have to consider it anymore. I just, I have the opportunity of giving it a go. Giving it a grow. Okay. So we got our, our pile of fluff here and then let's carefully, oh my gosh. Wait. <laughs> it's so cute. So it's got, oh, I didn't say, it's a philodendron El Chaco Red. So the attribute that this plant gets that I really love is it gets this beautiful red underside. Now this is something you don't really see with philodendrons, that red underside. It's much more common with like calatheas and prayer plants and a couple other plants like inch plants, for example. But this guy, <laughs> I love that it's got that look of like the philodendron, kind of like the varicosum or like the melanochrysum, that type of philodendron. It is a hybrid though, being El Chaco Red in the quote or the single quote mark, whatever, whatever it's called, the apostrophe. There's a word for it. I was not, we don't want to talk about the level of English class that I was in in high school because it was the lowest level. I was in AP macro, in AP statistics, but I was in below basic English, honestly, by choice. I didn't want to read in high school. Who did? This philodendron El Chaco Red is going to go in one of my greenhouse cabinets directly underneath one of my grow lights. That humidity and that supplemented lighting is hopefully going to keep this plant as happy as possible. Hopefully grow a couple of new leaves in the next couple months and we'll get the full philodendron El Chaco Red experience. So stay tuned. All right, let's hop back on the Hoya train. There's another one sitting right on top here that once again, I have never heard of. Have I heard of any of these Hoyas? No. Now we got a whole bunch of surprises when it comes to the Hoyas today. I also think Hoyas are like one of the most perfect plants to order online because they can ship to you so small and give it a year. Ever since I've been keeping a lot of my Hoyas much closer to the window, a lot of my newer Hoyas start growing like within a month or two of bringing them home. And then within like six months, they have full on new vines on them that are just mind blowing to me because I've just, I've, I've learned the hard way when it comes to caring for my Hoyas. That is an understatement. This is a little cutie right here. It is giving me vibes of like Puba Calyx in a way, just from the leaf shape. 
it would be one of those Hoyas that if you say all Hoyas look the same, maybe you wouldn't be that wrong with this one, but there are, once again, so many reasons why I lost the tag. What did I do with the tag? Oh, I found it. Okay, so, oh, I love the name of this one, by the way. So this is a Hoya Polypus. That's what she's named. I didn't name her, but I would have named it this was I given the opportunity. So this lovely Hoya Polly Puss <laughs> is giving me like a really splashy, dull version of like my Hoya Pubicalix or my Hoya Ban Yang Nyoi. Two of those leaves are a little bit more curled back and a little bit more funky looking while this one leaf is much more flat. I don't know obviously what this is going to look like over time. I'm sure if I was to Google this, it would look either like the curly or the flat or maybe both. Maybe it's known for doing both. Maybe that's kind of its thing. We love a good niche, you know what I mean? So I would be thrilled with that. We have a new leaf coming in. Hopefully this new leaf stays on the plant because sometimes when I'm receiving plants in the mail or back when I was like working at the houseplant store and receive like a box of Hoyas if they were covered in new growth, that new growth would usually come off after it was experiencing the shock of travel. So I wouldn't be totally surprised if this new leaf falls off. I'm messing with it right now and it's staying put usually would just pop right off. So we'll put it in the bright light. We'll let it do its thing. This one is much thicker than the, at least the first one, but honestly, and the second one. Too. So this one I'm not gonna have to like put in like a greenhouse cabinet or anything to get it started. I can imagine I can just go throw it on my windowsill or my little plant bench that I have over near my windows where I grow pretty much all of my Hoyas and call it a day. So there are three more Hoyas in here. There are two mildly larger plants in here, but I kind of want to open these because I normally save the larger ones for last, but it's like I know what the two larger ones are. So I want to be more surprised by these Hoyas. I don't know if they want me to open the larger ones last, but we're gonna open this one. Maybe we'll stagger the two large ones. We'll open the, the other largest one last, last. It's a lot of fluff. You can make like a full clown wig with the amount of fluff that we have here, but it's keeping that plant safe. She's doing her job. Oh, goodness gracious me. So this is a Syngonium. They call this one Syngonium Tri-Leaf Wonder. I don't know if this is the same. I've, I've tried growing um, Syngonium Aretum a couple times in the past. I will fully admit, I've not had good luck growing that Syngonium. So if this is Syngonium Aretum, I am buckling up, but you know what? Third time's the charm, slash three strikes and you're out. This is giving me a very similar vibe to the Philodendron Tripartitum that I was talking about earlier, the Philodendron that I personally have a lot of good luck with. So if you like the look of Philodendron Tripartitum and you can't find it, or you already grow in your home and you wanna try something else that's very similar, try the Syngonium Tri-Leaf Wonder. It is really cute though. I feel like the, maybe it is slightly different than the Aretum or like a different cultivar or hybrid that includes the Aretum. Cause this one's just a little bit smaller leaf. Like the other ones I had were a little bit larger leaf and like maybe a little bit duller. Maybe that's not a really important characteristic, but yeah, this one seems very, very mildly different. Like it could be different, but it also could be the same exact plant because you never know with plant names these days, you know what I mean? Definitely a really nice looking specimen though. This one is in the sphagnum moss, I should point out. I literally just throw everything on my floor when I'm doing unboxings. I need to get like a trash can or a trash bag to start keeping around, but I don't do them that often. So I can do a little 10 second tidy. Yeah, I was a big comfy couch boy. The clock stretch, don't come for me about the clock stretch. Okay, so we have three more Hoyas to open and then we have the other Aeroid to open. So let's just do it in that order. Just threw the tag on the floor again. Not learning from my mistakes in the way that I normally do. Wait, okay. This is, first of all, it's called a, a Hoya Cis, Cis, oh wait, a Hoya Cistiantha Splash. The name's giving. It's very splashy. This is giving Hoya Multiflora. A very thin-leaved Hoya. In fact, Hoya Multiflora is often thought to not even be a Hoya. It's thought to be a different, yet very closely related to Hoya's genus of plants. Sometimes it's kind of a, a debated topic in the Hoya world, I guess. I'm not debating it. I don't really care. It can be whatever it wants. I'm fine with it as long as it looks the same. You know what I mean? Anyway, this has the same upright growth pattern. It looks like just from this cutting right here. Obviously, in time, it's going to look completely different. This is just my initial reaction. But it's got that same like upright growth pattern that Hoya Multiflora has, as well as these just like really weird, like crinkled, ridgy, thin, super thin. Emphasis on thin, what's thinner? Let's grab this other one. This is thinner. You would think this is thinner from looking at it, but this guy right here is thinner. I equally have the new Ariana Grande album and the new Beyonce album stuck in my head. I feel like those have been like the only two albums I've been listening to for the past couple of weeks whenever Ariana released hers. I am in a chokehold and I need to get out of it because it's the only thing I hear in my head. My internal monologue is Ariana Grande and Beyonce. 
constantly, which is fine. Honestly, I'm slipping for it. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> another thin leaf toy. Not as thin as last. It's she's pretty thin, girl. She's pretty thin. So this is a Hoya Campanulata. <gasps> she's our companion. Oh, I love that for her. I'm curious what the tea is with all of these thin Hoyas. Like, does Plant Haven Toronto know I love my Hoya Multiflora and they're, they're just really striking a nerve right now? Or are these just some new Hoyas on the market that they just want me to give a go? It could be either option. But this is super thin. Like, okay, let's, let's compare. Let's compare thinness once again. So we've got Hoya Cystiantha with Hoya Campanulata. <laughs> is that the name? Ooh, uh, she's thinner, girl. Campanulato's thinner. We're getting thinner and thinner. This last one's going to be just nothing. It's not even gonna be a Hoya because the leaves are just going to be like kelp flowing in the sea. Hey babe, how are you doing? We have a muffin saying hello today. I'm just gonna sit there. That's fine. Guess there's not really any room for you to come over and say hello to me. She's probably just waiting for me to be done. She's been very needy lately and she wants all the attention she can get and she deserves it. But she wants it like 18 hours a day. All right, our last Hoya. Oh, this one's cool. This one's like, I got a really thick fuzzy stem. Oh, uh, what, what is this reminding me of? Oh, it's very peculiar. I do have a, a comparison actually. It's like a Hoya Numelarioides meets a Hoya Crassipes meets a Hoya, what's the name of it? Is it Inconcina? I don't think that's the name of it. Maybe it is. Hoya Inconcina. It's like the really like thin Peperomia Incana like Hoya. These stems are giving Peperomia Incana to me. They're very, very thick. Or like Hoya Globulosa maybe. If I had to come up with a different Hoya that's got the similar stem to it. There's like thick, fuzzy stem. The leaves aren't fuzzy. They have, if you look at them like in the light, like I can see like a little layer of like cilia along the edges here. So they look good. You're not gonna chew that, right? This little Hoya. It's got Muffin's name written all over it to chew on those little tiny dainty leaves. She would love that. Anyway, it's got the um, the stems of like a Hoya globulosa or the other Hoya that I was just talking about. The leaves are giving me like the weird oblongness of like the Hoya crassipes, but then the like dullness and the slight fuzziness of the Hoya numelarioides. So a lot of different things going on with this Hoya here. Oh, and this is called a, a Hoya bermanica. That sounds like a name, like Jessica bermanica. It's a little bit, um, it's a little burlier of a name, maybe because it starts with B-U-R, so it's just giving that vibe. Once again, just one single stem of this plant here, but this, such a substantial guy in comparison to like the little dainty hoya that we had at first when I just pulled away from muffin. Like, look at this tiny, tiny little dainty stem versus this chonker right here in comparison. It's thicker than like a Hoya carnosa or a pubicalyx, definitely on quite the thicker side than what I'm used to seeing for most of the Hoyas that I've ever grown. It's also got some new growth coming in on, as you can see right here, new leaf right here, two new leaves right here, also new stems. So this one's got like the most promising new growth, I would say, out of all of the Hoyas we have, although all of them I know are going to grow swimmingly as all of the Hoyas that I've ever received from Plant Haven Toronto have. There's so much diversity with all the Hoyas that we got today. They're all just so different from each other for so many different reasons. Also proving that not all Hoyas look the same. So if you're a Hoya hater for that reason, you can't be anymore. We proved you wrong. And this is our last plant that we're opening today. The name looks familiar. I actually think maybe they sent us this before, but it might be a different variety of the plant. So we'll figure it out in 10 seconds. Regardless, I'm very excited to see what this is gonna look like at the size. Oh, she's toppling again, girl. Oh, wait, no, I don't have this one. This is, um, what is this? Empipernum amplissimum. So this is like the like long lancelate leaf version. Oh, wow. This is actually really cool. Um, long lancelate version of the, the pothos. It's very closely related to your standard golden pothos, the Epipernum aureum. When I read this name, I thought this was gonna be Epipernum panatum. I totally mixed them up. So that's why I thought I got the same one as before. No, they, they sent me Epipernum Panatum last time, a variegated version of that, and this is a variegated version of a Pippernum amplissimum, which you know what? I'm gonna full out say that I did a video recently of plants I can't stand or plants I hate, I can't remember what it was called, but I talked about a Pippernum amplissimum, the standard version, because honestly, it's just like not exciting, but this version with this variegation, it's giving ginger plant. You know what I'm talking about? Like the stromanthi, it's giving stromanthi, it's giving alpine ginger, but it's an aroid, and 
that means it's going to be that much easier to grow than any of those gingers or those prayer plants. So already a really good sign. Also the way that this one is holding itself, so much better than the plain one that I have. You guys are witnessing me come around the Epipernum Amplissimum. There's also just so many different shades of variegation. Like this one leaf right here is giving me more of the variegation that you would see on like the Monstera Stanleyana, Stanleyana, I can never remember. The N or the Y comes first. And this one right here is giving much more of like that alpine ginger as I was talking about. Well, this one right here is almost completely variegated and giving me like the more heavier variegated leaves on my green variegated Monstera. Also, this looks like it's a very new leaf coming in. I can't tell if this is the newest or this is the newest. It doesn't matter. Anyway, just so much variety on this one plant right here in terms of what we're getting in variegation. Even the newest leaf has a very particular type of variegation. So I love seeing all these different leaves right here. And as I said, it's very closely related to a pothos. So you can rest assured that this plant is going to be at least decently easy to grow. I'm really glad we opened this one last because this is definitely the one that I'm most shocked about. Like obviously I love all my Hoyas and I would say I love the Hoyas the most because obviously I'm kind of biased to those. But this is something like if I didn't mix up Pinatum and Amplicity and I thought this was Amplissimum going into opening the plant, I would have been kind of like, oh, well, I don't really like that plant, but uh, I was very pleasantly surprised, even with it being the plant that I would have not liked right off the bat. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think you get what I'm saying. This is like a rare specimen of a plant where I'm actually kind of like, this would look better on a moss pole than it would look just growing regularly. If it climbs up, it's just got this one beefy vine to just take over a moss pole. It wouldn't look messy or anything, which is usually my biggest complaint about things that are growing up moss poles or trellises, that they just look very messy. I feel like this would look very manicured as just one piece of plant growing up a support. I think that's what we're gonna do, but we're gonna have to give this a really nice planter as well because these are pr some pretty stellar leaves. So we're gonna have to make sure that we pick a color and material of planter that's really going to do this some justice. But as we have just unboxed this plant as well as all the other ones that we've unboxed today, we are going to let all of these plants acclimate here in our home for at least two weeks before we go ahead and repot them. Ideally, we would want our plants to settle in our home for a full month before we go ahead and repot them, but if around that two week mark, you are seeing some nice new growth on your plant and no signs of stress, I'd say at that point, you can go ahead and repot your plants and you're probably not going to have any issues. Just of course, make sure that you're using an appropriate planter material and size, as well as a soil mix that's going to really complement your plant's growth habits. But that's going to do it for our unboxing today. Let's just quickly recap all of the plants that we got in today's unboxing. We have this Hoya right here that I unfortunately am going to have to search for the tag for, so uh, I'll put the name on screen, but I cannot remember it at this moment. We have this Philodendron El Chaco Red, super beautiful little Philodendron right here. I'm excited to watch this one grow. Hoya Bermanica, Hoya Insularis, this lovely Epipernum Amplissimum variegata, this ever so stunning Syngonium Trileaf Wonder, Hoya Companulata, Hoya Cystiantha Splash, and last but most certainly not least, our lovely Hoya Polypus. Thank you again to Plant Haven Toronto for sending us these plants for today's unboxing. And don't forget that you can use code NICK2024 to save 15% on your next purchase from Plant Haven Toronto. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you don't already, you can follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Philly Foliage. Consider sharing and liking this video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great time.